in the last episode. Hello guys, my name is Eric Van, all of a sudden, and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. I was a little bit of a dick in the last episode because I ended it here, but the episode was already going on like an hour, so I had to end it somewhere, so I figured this was going to be a good point. So, if you remember, Yui is going down the hallway, and she's trying to find her lucky pencil, she had to come back here, but the old lady who was passed out on the road, the old grandma who ended up dying in the hospital, was like, Don't go to school, go to Heavenly Host, or whatever. So, here we are, in this long hallway that seems longer than usual. Then all of a sudden... <laughs> I heard a faint noise, as of someone playing an organ, like my liver. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, okay, don't laugh too much. Okay, I mean like an organ, like the piano organ thing. <laughs> Yui, maybe someone's in the music room. Hey, could very well be, okay? There's some very dedicated students, especially in Asian countries that stay at school for a very late, long time. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my nerves. It was probably the sounds of the rain, wind, and thunder mixing together. It just sounded like an organ, that's all. Duh! Because rain, wind, and thunder mixed together, it sounds like an organ. All the time. Whenever there's a thunderstorm, I'm like, mm, it's such beautiful organ music. Totally. I was convinced I kept walking. But then, I heard the same noise again, this time much more clearly. It was unmistakable. Okay, this chapter is becoming really creepy. Like, it wasn't very creepy, but it's becoming creepy. I was paralyzed with fear. My heart was pounding as if we were struggling to break free of someone's sinister grip. That's because I have your heart, Yui. Exactly. You know what, Yui? Sometimes you just gotta man up and just... Well, not man up, just be strong, okay? I want to make it you multisexual. Man up. Thinking about it, I vaguely recalled someone mentioning an upcoming performance by the Wind Instrument Club. I guess an organ would qualify. Somebody must have just stayed late to practice, that's all. <gasps> Yeah, come on, you don't get it. Let it get to your head, okay? I took another deep breath and tried again to calm my overly jittery nerves. Of course. I'd heard that if you let your imagination run too wild, fear can even make you see things that aren't there. And my imagination was most definitely running wild. Of course, I do that all the time. After I play horror games for the channel, I'm freaked out. I look behind me and I'm like, Ah, it's a shadow! My God, it's gonna kill me! But there's nothing. Might as well sprint the rest of the way. Do it. Get sweaty. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, lucky pencil. Oh, yeah. Felt good. Just run away. I decided to dash toward my classroom so I could get out of this hall as quickly as possible. It's dark in here. Get good turn on the lights. I don't like the dark. Finally reaching, even though I'm sitting here playing games in the dark. <laughs> Oops. I swiftly opened it and flicked on the lights. Yeah, make sure you get out of here, okay? And don't join the Pen15 Club, it's a bad idea. Thanks to all my unexpected pauses to freak out over the thunder and lightning, it took me far longer than it should have to get here. It was already well past seven. Uh-oh, Yoshie, who they say in the story that it was a teacher, but I swear Yoshie is the name of Sachiko's mom, who was a nurse, but I guess since the story has been passed down through word of mouth for a long time, it makes sense that it would get mixed up how she's a teacher. It was the point in time when the ghost of a teacher was supposed to appear, at least according to the school legend, but she was really a nurse. <laughs> Uh, keep on telling yourself that, but what do you actually believe, Yui? Yeah, right, you believe there's a ghost here. I let out a sigh of relief and relaxed my shoulders a bit. The lights were on both inside the classroom and out in the hallway. Sure, it was still dead silent, but the fear I'd been feeling had completely melted away. In this game, anything's possible. She doesn't even know she's in a game. She doesn't even know about... Okay, just kidding. Let's not break the fourth wall. I grabbed the pen case I'd come back for and shoved it into my pocket. 
With my long ordeal behind me, more or less, I looked around the classroom and let out another sigh. I'd only ever known this classroom when it was bustling with activity, and thus found its eerie silence and utter stillness to be oddly fascinating. It is weird doing that. I've gone back to my school before, late at night, and walked around, and it is kind of weird. I got the idea in my head to try doing something I normally wouldn't be able to, like standing at the teacher's podium and writing on the blackboard. Well, she does want to be a teacher, it makes sense. Okay, that is kind of weird that you do that when no one's here, but... To me, the area behind that podium from which teachers conduct their lessons was like a sacred space. I dreamed of standing there myself one day and could hardly resist its pull when presented with a rare opportunity like this. It is interesting standing up in front of a class. Trust me, it is. It'd be a little scary at first, too. A little nerve-wracking. But now that I've done it for five years, it's not nerve-wracking at all. It's like, sit down and shut up and get ready for your lesson. Okay, just kidding, I don't do that. To my classmates, this would seem like such a silly, stupid dilemma, but that didn't change the way I felt at that moment. What? What kind of decision is this? Stand at the teacher's podium or leave the room? Leave the room? No way, let's stand at the teacher's podium. We want to be a teacher, so why would we not do it? Let's practice a little bit. Of course, it's a chance to feel like a real teacher. I totally should have saved my game. I decided I had to try it. During daily cleanup and such, I'd come and gone from this spot countless times, but this was the first time I'd ever had an opportunity to just stand here and preside over the classroom. Of course I had to. That's like her dream. Why would I want to rip her dreams away from her? Just be a dreamer. Be a dreamer. And a doer. She's a doer and a dreamer. That's perfect. Gaining a teacher's point of view in the most literal sense was starting to get me really fired up. Yeah, I guess do it. It may seem silly now, but this was my stage. This was where all my dreams would play. It kind of does feel like a stage sometimes when you're on a roll and you're teaching really well. I began to imagine the future that awaited me, painstakingly detailing some new piece of knowledge for students sitting attentively at their desks, gliding chalk across the board, filling it with information to aid them in their studies. You will, Yui. I know your future, okay? Trust me. I was getting so excited that even I began to think my behavior was a little strange. Maybe it was the juxtaposition of these joyous, freeing visions that, and the prickling dread I'd been feeling up until just a minute or two before. But then, in the blink of an eye, one of these two conflicting emotions completely overpowered the other. <laughs> oh no, did I make the wrong decision? <gasps> it's not a- well, there is a storm out, it could be. Suddenly, my surroundings were bathed in darkness. Going stiff with shock, I stumbled back a step. My back struck the blackboard with a dull thud. <laughs> This is your t chance to get out of here now. Can I choose get out of here now? Am I a little late? I'm sorry I'm late. Get out of here! I instinctively grabbed hold of the rail where the eraser sat. I felt chalk dust against my fingertips. My panicked heartbeat was making it difficult to breathe. Was this caused by the thunderstorm? If so, it sure picked a fine time to turn the lights out on me. Who turned out the lights? <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe, maybe a fuse blew and it's just this room. Or not. Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? That's impossible. She was no fortune teller or a psychic. As far as I was aware, how could she possibly have known this would happen? Hell, even if she were a fortune teller or a psychic, predicting the future is the stuff of science fiction. I shook my head. Or fantasy. That fits in the genre too. Just saying. Just saying. There you go. That's plausible. And instead of thinking about it, why don't you get the fuck out of here? Why don't you just run right now? Be like, that's this K. This is freaky. So I'm going to run as fast as I can out of here. But she's like, nah, I'm just going to... It's gonna ponder this little misfortune I've had. I'm gonna stay in this black dark room while the creepy music plays and come at me, ghosts! Hey, bros, come at me! May as well just say that, huh? I curled my chalk dusted fingers into a fist and silently tried to talk some sense into myself. Well, let's get, hurry up. I should have been playing teacher. I should have been in and out by now. Cursing myself a little, I fumbled my way through the darkened classroom. Oops, I think I messed up. <laughs> 
I'd spent so much time in here, you'd think I'd be able to find my way out of it with my eyes closed as it were. But sadly, that wasn't the case. Smashing loudly into a desk, I knocked it on its side and began tumbling after it, instinctively grabbing at other desks around me for support. Well, that sucks. Well, don't worry about cleaning it, just get the hell out of here, okay? No, you don't have to. Still fumbling around blindly, I gathered up all the scattered notes, textbooks, and writing utensils. Who cares? Just leave. No one will know it was you. I let out a sigh. I seem to be doing that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. I was trying to take inventory of all the things I'd knocked out of the desk and realized why. I might as well just stand it up and stuff it all back in. There you go, or don't, do you, no one's gonna, well, I guess she's a very honest person, so. Not that that was a particularly pleasant prospect, explaining what I'd done wouldn't be so easy, and no matter how I sugarcoated it, it would serve as a clear indication of my clumsiness. If I didn't say anything, it's not like I'd be found out, but that would be the same as lying as far as I'm concerned, and I couldn't do that. Wow, she is truly good. In terms of good people, she would be, like, lawful good. She's really good. I placed my hand against the floor and swept it around, feeling for anything I might have missed. And I found something, all right. What is it? I clearly brushed my fingers across something, but I had no idea what. It was no notebook or writing implement, though that's for sure. Well, what is it? Maybe it's just a used condom and some people were having some extracurricular school activities in here. But that would be kind of gross, too. Maybe it had been on the floor all along. Yui, stop it. Just get the hell out of there. I rubbed my sticky fingertips. Well, I'm telling her to get the hell out of there because I have a feeling I made a wrong decision. And if she gets out of there, then I'd feel better about myself. <laughs> Deeper into the wet spot, then brought my hand up close to my face so I could get a better look at what it was there. What on earth did I just touch? <coughs> Tomato juice? There was a flash of lightning almost immediately joined by a roaring thunder clap. And with it, for a split second, the pitch black classroom was lit up as bright as day. See? <laughs> I shot to my feet, utterly mortified. In that split second, I got a very good look at my fingers, and it really did seem as if they were covered in blood. But it wasn't just my hand, no. If my peripheral vision were to be trusted, it looked like the entire classroom was stained a deep, dark crism crimson. Did we go to Heavenly Host? Holy shit! Without thinking, I backed away from where I'd been crouching. I tried rationalizing what I saw. How could a whole classroom become a bloodbath like this? Did something spill? Did someone stumble in here injured? Yui, get out of there! My whole body was quaking. I fled from the classroom. Thank God. Or rather, I tried to flee. I pulled on the door handle again and again in a frenzy. I was pulling so hard it felt like my fingernails might tear loose. But it just wouldn't budge. I was absentmindedly grabbing at my hair with one hand and slam my fist on a nearby desk with the other. Try the other door. This was a nightmare. Silence saturated the inky blackness of the room. I took several deep breaths in an effort to restrain my pounding heart. I hate to break it to you. I played enough horror games where I know where this is going. Do it. Scream for Sukasa. I was certain that when I saw, what I saw was actually was oh, Jesus. I read that wrong. <laughs> I was certain that when I saw what it actually was come morning, it ended up being something totally random, like someone's old soda-stained gym clothes. Of course, let's still be rational about this. I agree. My imagination was just running wild because I was panicking. Of course, so let's break it. I decided to check out that hypothesis by feeling my way across the door and determining if anything was jutting out from any of the cracks. I fumbled around the gaps in the door, but I just couldn't make anything out that way. No, this was the third floor. 
I couldn't get out of here without exiting into the hallway. Still at a loss, I noticed a sudden flash of light through the hallway window. But the glass was only translucent, so I couldn't be sure of its source. Then there came the distinctive clomp 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 of footsteps. I wonder if someone might be playing a joke on her. I recalled the existence of a custodian who always patrolled the school grounds. I'm sure he was probably taking a look around after the sudden power outage. All at once, my fear-addled legs regained their strength. This nightmare would soon be over. I shouted to the custodian at the top of my lungs through the window. I had to be sure he heard me. I shouted again. Finally, I could see the light out in the hallway again, and it seemed to be getting closer. However... Why? Perturbed, I took a step away from the window. Kind of looks like what? Like the faint, unearthly glow classically attributed to spirits was what I was thinking. I tried to stop myself from finishing that thought, however. So she has made her way into Heavenly Host, I guess. Dullness aside, it also looked like it was wriggling around in a very unnatural, very unflashlight like way. Clomp, clomp, clomp. Four clomps, then a three or so second interval, then another four clomps. They were sounding in a fixed rhythm. I wonder if it's the principal son from Heavenly Host who's walking around. I forget his name. I should remember, but... The fear was back in full force. I had to find somewhere to hide. What if I'd accidentally summoned something inhuman? I mean, whatever that was, I begged it for help. I literally invited it in. Okay, I'm totally saving my game. What am I doing? Okay, where am I gonna hide? Where am I gonna hide? The locker or the teacher's podium. You know what? I'm not gonna go with what's conventional. Like, a part of me is saying go for the supply locker, but another part of me is saying go for the teacher's podium because Yui wants to be a teacher, so maybe that's gonna bring her good luck. I'm being very superstitious. Let's do it, teacher's podium. I hurriedly hid myself beneath the teacher's podium. I grabbed my knees, curled up, and made myself as small as I could. The footsteps continued to draw nearer and nearer. Clump, 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 clump. Glomp! <laughs> Anime convention, glomp. Little by little, the sound grew louder. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I held my breath, clasped my hands together, and silently prayed. Clump, clump, clump. They were close now. Very, very close. Why was this happening? I couldn't make any sense of it. I just wanted it to be over. I prayed to God that it would end. Is she religious? I forget. Was this... Was this what the old woman was trying to warn me about? Was this all happening because I ignored her? Because I didn't take the paper doll from her? Was it because I'd heard the ghost story of Yoshie and allowed it to get to me? Or did the strange events of the day have nothing to do with what was happening to me now? I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of everything. Feels like my heart is going to burst on my chest. Don't worry, Yui, I got your heart carefully in my hands. I was still holding my breath. I didn't dare let even the tiniest of sounds escape and give away my position. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Someone's tap dancing. Da da dee 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 ha! Tap, tap, tap. 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 I like my beer on tap. I'm gonna tap. That. That's. No, I'm not gonna say it. The consistent rhythm of the footsteps suddenly ended halfway into one of its cycles. And it had ended right in front of this very classroom. Dun dun dun! <gasps> Is that Yoshi, really? I had goosebumps up and down my arms and legs. Looks like a female. I stopped praying and clasped my hands over my mouth. I knew I'd scream if I didn't. So she probably isn't in Heavenly Host, but... There's like maybe the barriers are like starting to meld together a little bit and they're starting to dissipate but not completely. And so Yoshie, we can see her. I knew I'd scream if I didn't. Could this be Yoshie? Was the school legend real? God, she sounds terrified. 
All I could do was close my eyes, keep my mouth shut, and hope that whoever or whatever this was would just go away. See, I keep on thinking maybe this is just a prank on her, though, because this chapter seems very normal, but it might not be. But the footstep sounds didn't start again. If this was indeed Yoshie, then she'd stopped in front of the classroom and was just standing there. I had no concept of time anymore. I stayed in my hiding spot for what was probably only a few minutes, but felt like at least an hour. I decided to carefully peek out from under the podium. I gingerly edged my head out just far enough to get a glimpse of the room when suddenly... <laughs> the footsteps rang out once more. It sounded like they were headed right for me and they might have been inside the room. I honestly couldn't tell. Oh, shit. I scrambled back into my hiding spot and covered my mouth with both hands. This is really intense. Holy shit. This was too much for me. My breathing was coarse and erratic, and my face was a mess of tears and snot. I was inconsolable. The footsteps just wouldn't stop. What on earth were they doing? It almost seemed like they were running around in circles just to scare me. It's gotta be a practical joke on her, I think. I mouthed th these words over and over again and moved my hands to my ears in a vain attempt to block out this torturous sound. And as if in response, the sound changed. <laughs> it was a loud, dull thud followed by silence. No more footsteps. I'd heard that sound hundreds of times before. It was the classroom door sliding open. That's good! I peeked out, but the door was still tightly shut. How could that be? If the sound I heard wasn't the door, then what was it? <laughs> I swear it's something like the barriers... If it's not a practical joke, it's like the barriers between Heavenly Host and this school are melding together a little bit what little safety i'd felt here was pretty much gone but to be fair i wasn't absolutely certain the spirit had seen or heard me either the prospect of stepping out into the open wasn't a desirable one but i had to decide if it was better to stay where i was or to make a break for it oh hey i've been making the right decisions so far if i'm getting more decisions i've been making the right decisions because there's all kinds of bad endings in this chapter time to save Okay, guys, what should we do? Should we stay hidden or make a break for it? I think because the door is closed, we shouldn't make a break for it, but because it was open, we're going to make a break for it. That's it. Staying here is not going to do us any good. Staying in one place for too long seemed like it would be inviting trouble, so I took a deep breath and reluctantly crawled out as quietly as I could. But almost immediately, I felt something. Oh, shit! Tap. That. Something long and thin had struck me in the back of the head. Oh no. Or perhaps struck isn't the right word. There was a little force behind it, but it wasn't a hard slam. More like someone trying to get my attention. <gasps> oh my god, she was like right behind us. We keep on poking at the door, but we haven't really turned and looked the other way. Maybe she was like right behind us. I knew I wouldn't like what I was going to see, but I had to face whatever this was, so I turned around. And there, looming over me, was... <laughs> a figure was peering down at me from above the podium, with one emaciated wishbone-like finger extended toward my face. I recognized this person instantly, no doubt about it. This was the strange old woman who'd supposedly passed away earlier. I was scared out of my mind. I tumbled the rest of the way out from under the podium and shot to my feet. <laughs> a ghost. There really was a ghost in the school. My breathing was ragged and my heart was pounding so hard I thought it might explode. That doesn't make any sense. She died though, so she must be a ghost. I wonder if she was Yoshie and she somehow like got out like a physical form got out and she was trying to warn us about this or something. I don't know. Because she is old and Yoshie I guess would be old by now, right? Well, she'd probably be like 80. It could be her. Plowing through all the desks in my way, I ran as fast as I could toward the classroom door, but that was as far as I could go. Ah, oh, shit! <laughs> it's locked. Oh! There in the open doorway was the same old woman emitting a bluish-white glow. This was the source of the light I'd seen through the window earlier. But how in the world did she get to the door before I did? Because she's a ghost. Okay, she is a ghost. 
I felt like I was starting to hyperventilate and tried as best as I could to calm my breathing as my eyes darted about the room. I needed to get out of here now to get as far away from this place as I possibly could. That was my idea initially, okay? Well, that sucks. Couldn't you? J isn't there like another set of stairs at the end of this hallway or an emergency exit or something? What are we gonna do? I bit my lip and continued scanning the room. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot to fight back. I'm sure against a ghost. I didn't have time to think carefully about it. I just had to grab something and hope for the best. There were two choices and I had to pick one on impulse before it was too late. Oh, Jesus! Save the game. Holy crap. I, <laughs> oh my goodness. You gotta be really fast there. Okay, what are we gonna grab? The broom or the... Oh, shit! I saved my game and I wanted to grab an item. This is a broom or a bag. This is fuck. When I looked over, the spirit of the old woman was holding out her hand from the other side of the door frame. She really was trying to catch me. I wasn't just being paranoid. She was going to kill me and turn me into ghosts like her. I was convinced this had to be Yoshie, the teacher from that urban legend. I had the sudden sensation of someone seizing me by the throat, accompanied by an unpleasant crunching sound. God, she really did have me by the throat. I couldn't breathe. For as old and frail as she looked, she was uncommonly strong. <laughs> She was actually gripping me so tightly that she'd managed to raise me off the ground by my neck. I could see her slender, bony hand in the slender, bony on the periphery of my vision and feel it cutting my trachea. Was that hand really holding me in the air against my will, kicking and flailing by just the tissue and bones of my neck? I couldn't struggle anymore. I was like a puppet on a string. That's the sound of a neck snapping. And now we see red. With a sudden crack, my field vision shifted 90 degrees and everything turned blood red. So Yoshie was that old lady that was on the ground? That's weird. How did she get out of Heavenly Host then? She's like forever bound there. But maybe some part of her got out. Because Yoshie, Sachiko is the one who ends up going crazy in there. Yoshie is still like kind of nuts. But if I recall correctly, correct me if I'm wrong... But I thought that Yoshie, by the end of it, was like someone has to stop Sachiko, like, in her journal entry. Because Sachiko kept on thinking she's trying to appease her mom by doing what she's doing. But she wasn't by the end, and her mom didn't like it, or something like that. There were two choices, and I had to pick one impulse before it was too late. Here we go. Let's pick the bag of salt, because that is what you use against ghosts. I've watched enough Supernatural to know, you go with the salt. I heard that salt was used in purification rituals, so it seemed like a natural choice. Yes. Of course, why would we use the broom against a ghost, really? I placed the salt in my pocket as a sort of protective charm. When I looked over, the spirit of the old woman was holding out her hand from the other side of the door frame. She really was trying to catch me. I wasn't just being paranoid. She was going to kill me and turn me into a ghost like her. I was convinced this had to be Yoshie, the teacher from that urban legend. Of course she was. Good, Yui. You do it. Bracing myself, I darted toward the door at the back end of the classroom. There wasn't a moment to lose. If I didn't act fast, I probably wouldn't be able to act at all. It opened! Holy shit! I threw the door open and just began running at top speed, hoping to escape behind the spirit's back. Unsurprisingly, trying to outrun a ghost proved to be a fruitless endeavor. The spirit saw me and moved at breakneck speed to intercept. Why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I thrust my hand into my pocket and withdrew the bag of salt and then threw the entire thing directly. Oh, you should have kept some of it at the woman's face. It worked. Good. I ran down the hall as fast as my legs would carry me, briefly glancing over my shoulder after a moment to confirm that the spirit was still writhing. I just kept on running down that dark hallway with nothing but adrenaline and mortal fear to keep me going. I reached the stairwell at the end of the hall and made a mad dash toward the ground level. I was determined to get out of this building alive. Finally, still moving at top speed, I reached the window door leading outside. Luckily, the malevolent spirit hadn't caught up to me yet. It actually seemed like I might be able to escape. I might actually survive this. We're so close! Come on, run, Yui! No, yeah, don't, don't stop to breathe, okay? Don't be like, huh? Don't do one of those things like in an anime or a horror where they're like, oh god, yeah. 
Oh, that was hard. We're almost there. We're so close. Blah! And then you die. Just keep on going. I grabbed the handle and tried pulling it. Good. She's going. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Double trouble. Run away somewhere else or break the glass. Ah, uh, break the glass. Putting my thoughts in order, I came to the sudden realization that I was right near the umbrella racks. Unless the spirit had taken it or something, my umbrella should still have been right where I'd left it. How is an umbrella going to break glass, really? I practically tackled the rag, grabbing my umbrella in one swift motion. Not from the handle, mind you, but from the top. Then taking aim at the glass part of the door, I swung as hard as I could, smacking it dead center with the sturdy plastic handle. It's not going to work. The glass wasn't going to break so easily, of course, but it did crack, giving me the impetus I needed to go in for a second hit. Again, again, I struck the glass. I had the umbrella gripped so tightly that the metal skeleton of the canopy was leaving indentations in my skin. I was sure there had to be a better way to do this. But I didn't have the luxury of time to figure out what it might have been. What? Oh, no! <laughs> Let's get out of here, then. Dude. Ew, that sounds gross. What are you doing? I began smacking the glass even harder, even faster. My hands were killing me, but this was my only hope of survival. Finally, after far too much effort. <gasps> oh, my God, we did it. That was the right choice. The glass shattered onto the floor, making one hell of a sound. Tepid air whooshed in from outside. It was still pouring rain, but I was free now, free to escape this hellhole. The pain I'd broken was on the lower half of the door, and I didn't care if I cut myself. I got down on my hands and knees, and I crawled like mad. I felt triumphant. For a brief moment, the fear was gone, and I was basking in my victory over this malevolent entity. But it didn't last long before I was even halfway through the door. I felt something coiling itself around my arm. Oh shit, you should have crawled faster. With a start, I looked back. <gasps> oh no. A tall shadowy figure had appeared behind me in the entranceway and she had me in her grasp. There wasn't much more to her than an indistinct flickering silhouette. This is why you should have saved some of the salt. But I can clearly see she had a broken neck. Was this a different apparition? Her scraggly, root-like fingers were squeezing my arm with tremendous force, pushing aside muscle and tissue and pressing right on the bone. <laughs> this is Yoshie when she was younger, when she actually died. I was shaking hysterically and tears were streaming down my face. I was absolutely convinced that I was going to die here. I could offer no resistance. She was too strong. All I could do was plead with her. I felt like my arm would snap into it any moment. She wasn't just grabbing but twisting as well. The pain was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. I couldn't stop thinking about anything else. My mind was absorbed by the unconscionable agony. Oh my god, just... I'm trying not to look into her eyes because it's really creepy. And... but I can't stop doing it. Ugh. <laughs> what? Stop. Sukasa, you're awesome! I thought my arm was about to snap off and then all of a sudden I was whisked away. Whisked away by Sukasa. Sukasa, yeah, why are you here? You have some pretty good timing, huh? Sukasa was still holding onto me tightly after saving me from the brink of death. He led me back into the school at an incredible speed. What? Why did you, we go back in here? He practically spit these words as he continued running. And why do we come back in? Suzukasa knows something, obviously. I tried to match his gait, and once we were a bit more in sync, I looked up at his face. After we reached the end of the hall, he suddenly veered into the last classroom before the stairwell, pulling me in with him. Shishido, 
お前怪我はないか大丈夫私はもう一人で歩けるから I know what Tsukasa is going to do He gave her the lucky pencil so she would leave it here so that he could come back and he could see her and then he could make out with her and be like Hey you got my lucky pencil huh so you like me let's go to this dark classroom and make out but what he didn't expect was there being a ghost here Oh what that must be it. That sounds logical, right? I moved away from Zakasa and almost immediately spilled onto the ground like a house of cards. <laughs> this is good for Yui, though. I mean, Yui was freaking out alone. Now she's better that Tsukasa's here. Tsukasa grabbed my arm to help me up. Unfortunately, it was the arm Yoshie had been twisting. <laughs> Well, yeah, Ghost touched you. It's kind of like when Yoshie inside Heavenly Host went through Naomi, and Naomi got pretty messed up after that. I dropped my other hand over the sore spot where I assumed there was probably one hell of a bruise. I started rubbing gently, but it didn't help at all. Is the nurse even there? If the nurse isn't there, are you going to administer first aid? I think we should go to a hospital. And if we're going to go to the nurse's office, that's like Yoshie's home. Just thinking about going back out there and facing Yoshie made me shudder. I couldn't believe he was even entertaining the idea. You go, Sukasa. Why aren't they together? Maybe they are still together, and because she's like, Sukasa, Sukasa. Um, but like I said, because he wasn't taking care of her when she had a cold, maybe they're not together. Sukasa's gentle reassurance actually made me forget the pain in my arm for a moment. I had to stop myself from blushing or try to at any rate. You go. Sukasa offered me his hand. And I graciously took it, squeezing it tightly as he led me back out into the hallway. It's so warm. Mm, my body is shivering. Ah, oh, so hot. Despite the fact that nothing had really changed, I was still in just as much danger as I had been. The paralyzing fear I'd been feeling was gone. If it were just me, I would have never been able to do this. I would have frozen up. But with Sukasa leading the way, I felt like I could do anything. Shishido, just of course, we gotta run. With my blessing, Sukasa upped his pace significantly. You should carry her in your arms. I prayed silently for smooth sailing as I followed Sukasa's lead. Doubtful. I mean, it's good that he's there, but I don't think it's gonna matter if the go if Yoshie shows up. She can kill you both. I gently squeezed his hand again as if to reassure myself that he was still with me. As a matter of fact, Yoshie would probably kill one of you in front of the other and then kill the other one. I was starting to make think maybe Yoshie was gone, maybe we'd thwarted her, but of course, just as I was thinking that, she made her presence known again. Okay, someone get some salt, okay? Let's go to the cafeteria, that's where we should be going. No, no, no! No, don't show yourself! Sukasa, you gotta be a little stealthy, okay? An unearthly voice reverberated through the dark corridor. I immediately drew myself into Tsukasa's back. Okay, you know, I thought Yoshie was actually kind of good in the fact that she didn't want that to happen, but uh, didn't want Sachiko to keep on killing. Because I thought Yoshie, like, initially wanted uh, Sachiko to bring people into the world to keep them company, right? Because she was lonely or whatever. But then, like, Sachiko was getting out of hand, so Yoshie wanted it to stop. To the best of my knowledge, maybe. I forgot. Who knows? Over Sukasa's shoulder, I saw the same shadow-like spirit from before. It must have been waiting here to ambush us. <laughs> the ghost was moaning and wavering before us, and we'd never be able to get past it. No, I won't. Let's just agree. Say, hey, we'll do stuff for you if you don't kill us. Huh. 
It's a bad idea. That's a better idea. Salt? So Sukasa, maybe because it knows you have the charm, it'll just ignore you and go for Yui. That would be a little comical, but a little scary. It's like, hey, Yoshie, come for me, I'm running away. Sukasa runs away, looks back. Why is she not coming for me? And then she's like killing Yui. Ah! Plan backfired, oh my god. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. That's the same voice actor as Sachiko, isn't it? We really didn't have time to be arguing. It was closing in fast. And as it did, I noticed the spirit's figure had become more defined. She was a tall young woman with her head turned sideways at a 90 degree angle. That's where she broke her neck when she fell down the stairs. The tale of Yoshie suggests she fell down a flight of stairs, so a broken neck would certainly fit. See, right as I said it, the game just kind of reinforces that. He gave my back a shove to get me started, and with no time to object, I unconsciously obliged. Sukasa ran to, darting ahead of me for a few short moments. Hello, Sachiko's voice. You're cute. Sukasa ran as close as he possibly could to get Yoshie's attention, then turned tail and began sprinting off in the opposite direction. Amazingly, it worked. The spirit began chasing Sukasa, leaving me completely unobstructed. Decision time? I was torn on the one hand. I knew this was my best chance, but I couldn't help worrying about what would happen to Sukasa if his charm failed. I stopped for a moment and glanced over my shoulder. He was still running, and the shadowy figure was still in hot pursuit. I still can't believe I fell for it, but this was right about when I realized the truth. Sukasa had no protective charm, he just made that up so I wouldn't object too strongly to him serving as decoy while I got away. Oh shit, uh oh. Well this changes everything. I was gonna be like, let's trust Sukasa, but we can't now, because he might die. I stopped in my tracks and shouted at the top of my lungs. I wasn't sure exactly what I was getting myself into, but I had to do something, and calling the spirit's name definitely seemed to have an effect. Shishido is trying to talk to it. Open up a line of communication. Sometimes that works. I do that with bears in Canada sometimes. I'm doing some hiking, and then some bear comes, and I'm like, hey! Grizzly face. And they're like, oh, how'd you know my name was Grizzly face? And we start talking, and the bear goes away and doesn't kill me. Oh, that's an interesting story, isn't it? All at once, the black figure was facing me, though I never saw her turn around. She was flying toward me now, ignoring Tsukasa. Well, if you said it like ten times, I'm pretty sure you're scared. I repeated this like a suture and stuck one hand into my pocket, grasping tightly into the one and only item I'd stashed there. Lucky pencil! It's gonna work! Or not. Lucky pencil, yeah. Sukasa's care, his effort, his beliefs, they were all packed into this pencil. When you get right down to it, that's what a charm is, right? That's good, and it's really good for taking tests. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a test right in front of her. Be like, Yoshie, watch me take this test. Okay. Wait. Just wait. Ba Bam! Yoshie is gonna disappear. I squeezed the nubby little thing in my pocket, mentally preparing myself for the confrontation ahead. The confrontation I'd impulsively initiated. I'm taking a test here, Sukasa. We should write on her face. Be like, ah, Yoshie, you're dead. It's kind of like you passed out drunk, and I'm gonna write on your face. The pants. Which kami are you praying to? The kami, Amaterasu. I closed my eyes, lifted my hand from my pocket, and brandished Tsukasa's pencil intently. The gauntlet had been thrown, I was putting a lot of faith into this, and I really, really hoped I hadn't made a mistake in doing so. I'm 
I opened my eyes to find that the shadowy spirit Yoshie had, Yoshie had stopped dead in her tracks. Did it work? Was Tsukasa's pencil keeping this vengeful soul at bay? You were the nurse. Okay, Yoshie. Suddenly I was whisked off my feet and slammed against- Holy shit, against the ceiling! That's insane, that's high. I could see him down below. He was staring at me and desperately leaping. He was trying to catch me, I suppose, even though he knew he'd never reach. Oh, she's like against the ceiling. That's crazy. I called out to him over and over again in my mind. If he had, if he could get away, if he could survive this ordeal, then it would have all been worth it. Yoshie was drawing near and I was helplessly pinned to the ceiling. I had no chance at all. There was no doubt in my mind that my life was over. I clung to the relief I felt in Tsukasa's safety. It was the only thing keeping me from losing my head entirely. Then all at once the situation took a complete 180. It was like a miracle. I thought, okay. Before I had any idea what was happening, I found myself bathed in a gentle light. It was the old woman who had collapsed in front of my house. She was standing down below, enveloped in a warm glow. I thought we saw her earlier. I thought she was Yoshie, like an older version of her. Yoshie, don't take a shit in front of me. The black shadow lunged toward her, then there was a horrific noise, and the old woman was gone. She's still and just like that, I fell to the ground. Whatever Yoshie had done to me, the old woman must have nullified it. That must have been why she came to me this morning and why she had come again now. I felt like I was going to faint. Sukasa ran to my side and gently scooped me off the ground into his arms. Yoshie's spirit was gone. She'd vanished along with the light around us now. The only sound was the pitter-patter of raindrops on the school roof. Oi! Sister! Sister! See, you think because Yui and Tsukasa went through this together that they'd, like, have a relationship together forever, you know? Because this is quite the ordeal, and it's not something you can talk to other people about, because they're like, oh, man, me and Tsukasa, we were, like, chased around by a ghost and shit. People would be like, aha, that's funny, you're so weird. But, you know, they suffered together. And so, you think they would be together. I'd suffered quite a bump on my head uh, from my fall and was decidedly disoriented, but I still had enough sense to put my arms around Tsukasa's neck. <laughs> I wanted to protect you. I couldn't bear the thought of losing you, is what I wanted to say. But instead, I just passed out in his arms. That's romantic. I felt as though I was waking from a long, horrible dream. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> In the nurse's room, I'm lying in bed with you. Eh? It occurred to me to look at my surroundings, probably something I should have done before asking about them, but in my defense, I was out cold. Beige walls, pink curtains, white beds with solid blue covers. This was indeed the school infirmary, no doubt about it. He came and helped you. Oh, my God, he has no idea what happened. This is crazy. That's Heavenly Host for you, making people forget. What? Why is she healed? Like, you'd think there'd still be a problem with her. So, oh. huh? Or maybe the old woman had something to do with it. She made uh, Tsukasa forget and healed her or something. Mm -hmm. 
おおまあなんか様子が変だけどとにかく無事でこういうのって虫の知らせって言うんだな Yeah, you did. You came here and you had a protective charm and you saved her. Or you didn't have a protective charm, never mind. You said you lied about it. Yeah, okay. So, I don't know how to do it. I'm going to go to the house. ごそくんいっちょっとあら獅子堂さんメガ覚めたのね先生驚いたわよミクニくんが結相会って私を呼びに来るんだもの私が到着でよかったわねごめんはこうおかけして済みませんそれはいいのよでもあなたずいぶん
I followed Tsukasa's pointing finger and... Ooh, they're holding hands. Oh my god. So romantic. Chicka chicka bow wow. I prepared a mattress over here, Yui. Let's use it. Did I kill the mood? I wonder if Tsukasa does remember it, but he doesn't. He wants to try to, like, convince Yui that it was all just a dream so that she doesn't freak out. It could be it. It could be it. It's, it's, it could be it. I could think of a reason, but I didn't say anything. It just seemed kind of far fetched to me, and if I were misinterpreting him, I'd be very embarrassed. He couldn't possibly could. He, he remembers. He totally remembers, and he's just doing this for her sake. He is a smart guy. My face felt kind of warm. I placed the sweaty cafe au lait on my cheek and sighed softly. Boys can be so dense sometimes. I'm dense. Do you want to know where I'm dense? Right here! Oh, okay, that was so lame. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> mm, he doesn't even think much of it. They were you, you freaked out. Ah! <laughs> oh, she's gonna be angry because it seemed like so important to her, but to him, he's like, oh, really? That happened? <laughs> I let out another sigh and turned back toward the morning sun, stretching my arms skyward as a sudden wave of exhaustion overcame me. The day got brighter bit by bit, and I just stood there silently trying to piece together all the jumbled thoughts rattling around in my head. I was running away from Yoshie, and Tsukasa was with me. When then I was saved by that old woman. Oh, Tsukasa, you're a good guy. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. As the bright rays of the sun washed over me, I felt new life and new hope welling up from within, and I finally came to terms with those horrid events. Most likely I got the pen case without incident, but then on my way back, something hit my head and knocked me out. That would be just my luck. I didn't know what he was planning to do, but he was staring right at me. It felt kind of like he was staring into my soul. And then... Slowly, Tsukasa drew his face toward mine. Yes! No, he's not. Tsukasa's not like that. He's going to do something else. Like, oh, you got an eyelash there or something. I shut my eyes. I was ready for this. Or maybe I just didn't want to look. But the next sensation I felt wasn't quite the one I was expecting. He'd grabbed my arm for some reason and was staring down at it intently. <laughs> what? Turns out he was just concerned by the strange bruise I had apparently received, which had momentarily become visible when I raised my arms. It was right around my elbow. Right where Yoshi had grabbed me in my dream. Maybe he doesn't remember then. Giving a wry smile, I gently pulled my arm from his grip. Huh? 
You're all, you were holding hands, but I guess they weren't. This is just a CG image, so now they're gonna hold hands. Ha <laughs> ha oh, I skipped that, oops. <laughs> Young love. So beautiful. Young love is so beautiful. So beautiful. Hmm. Now we're back in the future. What happened to him then, huh? Yui sensei! Yui sensei! She's laughing creepily. Like, I can't even imagine what kind of dream she's having. She's having a very sexual dream of Tsukasa. Mm -hmm. I know I'd heard that voice before, but who was it? Was I just dreaming again? I still felt like I was holding Tsukasa's hand, though. Oh my god, so... So Satoshi and Tsukasa are very similar. Their voices are similar. I, I think it's the same voice actor, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's so disappointed. She's like, ah, shit. I was still dazed. I had no idea what was going on. All I knew was that one of my students, Satoshi Mochida, was here and he looked concerned. <laughs> I finally realized what he was talking about. I was holding Mochida's hand in my own and squeezing it awfully tightly. <laughs> She's got that bruise on her arm. You can see it. Take a look at it. <laughs> Mochida was a good student. He and I got along well, and we were already falling back into our usual pattern of good natured ribbing. Except. どうして持ち宅がうちにいるの？それさっき話したじゃん。え？その調子じゃ何も覚えてないんでしょう。何も？ああ、well you fell into him and kind of showed your panties a little bit。さっき俺の作ったお粥食って薬飲んでまた寝たじゃないか。she sounds okay. Mochi aside and pointed at the table. Of course he likes you. Your students love you, Shishiro. Shishiro sensei. Oh, you're so nice. Come on, thank him. <laughs> I stroked Monet's neck and he lied down contentedly on my futon. Such a pretty kitty. I was getting kind of wrapped up in petting him, as I often did. I almost forgot Mochida was here until he let out a huge sigh. Wow, he's lecturing her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sato should be like, call me Big Papa, okay, from now on. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. I must have seemed kind of deranged, but I could always blame it on the fever. <laughs> Yui, you're underhanded, okay? Mochida looked at me and let out another sigh. My poor sense of humor must have been getting to him. so <sighs> Kekko 
モネちゃんのご飯を用意してあれコンビニ行ったんじゃないのコンビニうん冷却シートと弁当があってえっとああ、わい、どんちゃん。ほら、これ。レシートの時間。本当だ。もしかして、ゆい先生。<笑>うわあ、もう。しっかりしてくれよ。まさか。そんなことは。ないと思うけど。どうかな。<笑> Or Sukasa did it and he came back and he's really stalking her. Because he's like, you know what? I've always loved you. She's like, no, but we decided we're going to call it quits. I love you. And it's really creepy. It was already past 10 o'clock in the evening. I couldn't believe Mochida had been with me this whole time. I felt both guilty and grateful, and I definitely gained a new respect for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bag was quite heavy. Inside it was a bottle of orange juice, some bananas, canned peaches, apples, and other assorted fruits. これ風邪の時ってビタミンを取るといいんだろうそれ食べて早く良くなってよ。He's smart. I drink orange juice and drink orange or eat and drink oranges and eat oranges when I'm sick too and it works. モチダ君。Everyone loves Mochida. She's like, oh my god, I love you, but you're my student. <gasps> Scandalous! That much fruit couldn't have come cheap, especially for a high schooler. I considered offering to pay him back, but decided against it. I knew he wouldn't take my money, and besides, I really appreciated the fact that he'd gone to all this trouble for me. I'd return the favor another time. If it ever seemed like he was going to be staying late after school, maybe I'd buy him dinner. Or I could help him with preparations for the school festival. I have a newfound respect for Satoshi, too. This game is making me like some of the characters that I didn't really like before, except for Naomi. I, I definitely don't like her after this. Uh 大丈夫道わかるかしらなんなら途中まで見送りに行くわよ。大丈夫だよ。ゆい先生はおとなしく寝てて。まだ本調子じゃないんだし。第一、夜道を女の人一人で歩くなんて。そとんだよ。そとし、then again、そとし、does just seem like he's like、has main character syndrome where it's like、he's perfect。it's like、he could never do any wrong。Whereas I like Yoshi because he does have some flaws, but he's still really strong. Mochida and I joked like this a lot. Usually it made him blush and get adorably embarrassed. But not today. Today he just grinned sheepishly with a mischievous glint in his eyes. I didn't quite get it. What was his angle? Tsukasa kun te. Sensei no koi bito? Do you s t e a so? Yui sensei neter toki, zutto sono hito no koto yonde tayo. Una sare nagara nandomo. Tsukasa kun, tsukasa kun te. Hm hm hm. Ah ha ha, now you have some blackmail. Eh? Dare nanda yo. That crafty Mochida had turned the tables on me, and how embarrassing to know that I'd been calling out Sukasa's name. I hesitated to answer for a moment, but then figured, what the hell, why not? Yeah, what happened though? That day, Sensei, what in a cot of Tsukasa Tito to Machigai Tadisho? You sensei, Kawaka, you? Korea, let's not say you. Nah, yeah. そういうことにしてあげる
もうあんまり大人をからかわないで<笑>だってこんなユイ先生めったに見れないからさ。I wasn't sure he was ever going to give me the full story of all the embarrassing things I'd done in my fever days, and maybe it was better he didn't. Either way, I was in his debt so he could tease me all he wanted just this once. ファイトファイトありがとう。いい子だな、持田君は。あの子は生徒だぞ。ああ、she kinda likes him。おいで、マネちゃん。一緒に寝ようか。<笑>会いたいな。And I'm assuming that's going to be the end of the chapter. There we go. That's the end of chapter three encounter. Holy crap, this episode is probably really long. I didn't time it at all, but wow, I have a feeling that it was long. It felt like it was long. I thought I only had a little bit left, but apparently I didn't. Um, this was really cool. I guess, you know, because of her experience here, someone left a comment saying when she first sees a ghost in Heavenly Host in the original Corpse Party game, she isn't, like, super surprised. And I'm assuming at that time, she's probably thinking, oh, ghosts and stuff, I've dealt with this before, and now I gotta make sure my students are safe because I've had an experience like this. So that was probably going on in her head, but we didn't know about that. So that's kind of, it adds a new layer to the, what happened during Heavenly Host, the events of the original game, which is cool, I guess. And it was cool. It was interesting to see some tidbits about her.、Um, but this chapter, it, it was pretty long. And a lot of the stuff at the beginning with Tsukasa, there was a lot of filler. And it, it could have been shorter. I'm finding with a lot of these chapters, except for Mayu, the Mayu chapter, the Mayu chapter seemed good. There was enough going on. All the time that it didn't feel like it was drawn out. But this one felt a little drawn out. Still, still good, but it was drawn out. Definitely drawn out. But I hope you enjoyed, anyways. In the next video of Corpse Party, we're going to be starting up chapter number four.、Um, there's eight chapters in total. So once we finish the next one, we'll probably be about halfway through the game. But I'm assuming, I think the last chapter is not that long, which is called Blood Drive, which is the chapter that leads into the actual Corpse Party Blood Drive, which is the next game on the Vita. But、uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Remember, liking, sharing helps me out immensely as a small YouTuber. And as always, guys, peace.